love you All the good times we had I wish I could repeat them For the past three months Love and feeling a little fever What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Man, not gonna lie to y'all, I got off my job. Pretty good job. Um, And I took a nap. I got home, I had a bad headache earlier. It was crazy. Um, I just wanna tell everybody who's getting, getting started, always chase your dreams. If you working, work your butt off, but when you get home, Take your nap, do what you got to do, but at least spend 30 minutes chasing your dreams every day. It will pay off within a year, within within two years, and you will see a very big change, or within a few months. Just always chase your dreams, always. It just starts with one small step, or you going out there and getting it, honestly. And with that being said, let's... um. Oh, dang, this guy kind of had an ad going here. But, yeah, just always chase your dreams, you know what I'm saying? That being said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, <clears throat> and stay tuned for more videos. Not no peace stuff, though, but let's let's watch this video. <laughs> let's watch this video. Let's, let's go through it, you know? Think about your favorite place you've ever worked. For me, still Disney. And I don't know if it was my love for Disney or if I just love to get out the house. If you've ever had overprotective parents, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When I first got my car, my mom was calling me every two and a half seconds. Where are you? I just looked in your room. <laughs> and you're not here. Mom, it's nine in the morning. I'm at school. And every time you leave the house, you feel like you're Michael Schofield for a few hours, breaking out of jail. So I never talked about this in my other Disney videos, but I actually remember the day I went in to apply. You start with a phone interview, and if you do good on the phone interview, they bring you in for the hard stuff, the personality test. I had a friend, William, who worked custodial at Magic Kingdom, so he helped coach me on how to take the test. All I know is I wanted to work with something in food because all I remembered from every time I've ever went to Disney ever was how amazing the food smelled. And I also very clearly remember my parents never buying me food ever at Disney. We're at Disney for eight hours and I'm like, Dad, I'm hungry, please. The food is too expensive here. When we'd walk past restaurants, I had to use every ounce of willpower not to crawl over to other families and be like, are you guys done with that chicken? So I just assumed if I worked in food and beverage, I'm gonna get free food. So I know it sounds a little crazy, but my goal was to be that guy at that kiosk selling the Mickey Mouse ice cream bars. So I go in, I smash that personality test. Congratulations, you're hired. Which park do you want to work at? Studios. Okay, well, here are all the available positions at studios. Okay, um, so if you select food and beverage, you'll be handling money, and you gotta take a math test. I get this math test. I haven't seen questions this easy since the fourth grade. Addition, subtraction, multiplication. I give it back to her. Mm, you failed. Do you want to pick maybe another position? I know that if y'all took a basic math test that you know you passed and you failed, you would feel some type of way too. Instantly kicked into thug mode. Talk to me nice, or don't talk at all. I stay hugging the block. Lady, is you disrespecting my gangster right now? Acts about me. Man, give me that test. In my head, that's how I sounded, but Maybe in reality it came out something like, Oh no, that is not Oakley Doakley. May I retake it, please? Take the test again, give it back to her. Mm, <laughs> you failed. You sure you don't want to do, mm, I don't know, anything else? So I picked attractions and that's how I ended up working at the Indiana Jones show. Something else that happens whenever I go to the park with my friends, a lot of people stop me and they tell me they applied for Disney because they saw the other videos. I'm gonna warn you right now, you gonna stand a lot. <laughs> This is how they sneakily prepare you for this at orientation. They just say stuff like, while you're at work, don't lean. <laughs> Here's the thing, I'm a gamer, and the standing position, 
is my enemy. You remember in Lion King when Simba ran away and he was laying there in the desert about to die? That was me 10 minutes after I clocked in on my first date. I'm laying there, my lips are all chapped. <gasps> water, water. Also, smiling all the time at Disney as an employee is in the job description. I would do that. However, comma, smiling when nobody's around, I'm not gonna do that. When people come around the corner and they're walking by, I'm gonna smile like, hey, hi, how you doing? Have a nice day. That's part of my job description. But when there's nobody around and it's me and you at greeter spot, I'm not gonna sit here like, <laughs> I'm so happy, happy, ha happy. If somebody from my hood came to the park and saw me from a distance smiling for no reason, my hood card would get invalidated instantly. A lot of y'all don't know this and I probably shouldn't reveal this in the video, but at this point it's whatever. We have secret black people meetings. Like when Nick Cannon wore that leopard outfit to, I don't know, some MTV award show. My parents woke me up at like two o'clock in the morning. Adani, wake up, emergency meeting right now. We're all here on Skype with the West Coast chapter. Like they're trying to figure out what to do with this dude. And we all voted to take his black card and put him on a 30 day probation. This is a real thing, I'm not making this up. I can't be out here smiling for no reason. Full stop, I had a great experience working with the company. However, comma, I feel like with my managers and my coworkers, this is a lot of stuff and a lot of situations that could have been handled differently. No tea, no shade. I was the perfect Disney cast member when I first got hired, but there's a lot of things that happened that kind of just pushed me to the dark side. Karens, and I don't mean guests and people coming into the park. I mean my co-workers The first tiff I ran into at work was the second weekend after I got hired But I do remember at training the guy that trained me his name was John John said blah 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 Stairs is all I remember and I don't know how many of y'all know this, but every single Indiana Jones show Sells out his family comes up to me. Sir. We have nowhere to sit. May we just sit right here in the floor? Me? Yeah, yeah, why not? Sure, you can sit right there. I put the family on the stairs, go to break, 15 minutes later, come back. So I'm chilling at Greeter. Sarah walks up to me. Um, okay, that's crazy. Um, I got this family sitting on the stairs, and, and they told me that you told them that they could sit on the stairs. This grown woman really just brought an audience to disrespect my gangster right now? My inner gangster popped off. Yo, talk to me nice, or don't talk at all. I'll put you on citizen, right now. In reality, what I most likely said was, yeah, I let him sit on the stairs. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, <clears throat> who said that you could do that? John told me I could do it. Oh, John told you this? Well, let's go talk to him. Sarah takes me and herself out of rotation, walk all the way over to Star Tours. Is John, where's John? Is John over in this section? Uh, no. We leave Star Tours and she's going to like every attraction. She's over here like, no sleep, Star Tours, Toy Story Mania, tram, another tram, another tram, plane, Tokyo Disney, no sleep. We finally find John in another section of the park. Tell John what you just told me. We can let people sit on the stairs? No, we can't, no, I'd never told you that. John was looking at us like, why are y'all even here? You see what I mean? These are the kind of people I had to work with at my attraction every single day. But let me tell y'all who the real stars of Disney are, the guests. Y'all need Jesus. Do y'all know that there are guests out there who their life mission is to end up at Disney jail? I'm being dead serious, Google, look, look it up. How funny would it be if Disney jail was like a speakeasy private club, you know? There's a guy next to a soda machine, right? When you walk up to the guy, he's gonna be like, what's the password? Misa, Mosca, Mickey Mouse. You go behind the soda machine, you walk down a tunnel, you jump on a slide and you go to a bottle floor and you first enter, there's a bunch of Disney characters. It's the Mickey Mouse jailhouse. <laughs> Come inside, there's fun inside. And Mickey's over there like, everybody say, oh, Toodles. Oh Toodles is over there sharpening his toothbrush, that, making a that, shank. That would also explain why we don't see any more Disney villains in the parks because they're all in Disney jail and doing meet and greets. You got the photo pass guy taking your mug shot and you know they got a food court down in there. And each prison cell has different themes. How funny would it be if at the end of your jail sentence, like Mickey's there to try to scare you straight, like they put you in that interrogation room. You think this is a game? 
<laughs> you think this is a Mickey Mouse game? game? They leave, the next family comes in. Get the camera out of my face! You think this is a game? This is how we're gonna do things! F Biggie! F Mob Deep! F bad Boy! I'm a self-made billionaire with a B! You know how much money I made during the pandemic? More than you make in your life! Why am I even down here talking to these clowns? Golly! I know this all sounds very outlandish, but this is the kind of stuff I would think about when I'm stuck at greeter spot, not smiling. I, I felt that. <laughs> I felt that heavy. I felt that heavy. I felt that heavy. I had some similar experiences at Six Flags. I was going to transfer to Whitewater, but I quit. It was one summer back, I think in 26, no, 17. 17, 17, no, 17, yeah. And it was a Karen, an older, not Karen, like a mid, mm, like 28 age lady. I told a family they could do something because I was working at, um, culinary food or whatnot. I said, yeah, sit to the side right there. And to the side, so-called, like, where we was at, um, like, I was around the water slides, and there was a certain area, if you sit right there, you get soaking wet. And the people got soaking wet and told the lady that he told us to stand right here and wait. And I said, yeah, I told him to stand right there. She was like, you know that gets very wet, like, this one spot. And, like, like the lady at the family, I told the mom slipped and hurt herself, and she in the hospital. Not in the hospital, but she like in the little medical area in Sex Flags. So I'm like, oh, my, my bad, my bad. I didn't. I was thinking that deep behind it. I was just like, hey, go sit right there and go stand. No, I didn't mean for the water to hurt them or whatnot. But yeah, it, it was weird. It, it was, yeah. I got chest eyes. I'm like, bruh, I am like seven. No. Nah, 15 turning on 16 this year or whatnot. Why are you all up on me like that? Is like I I get it. Trust me, I get it. Cause lady hurt herself, so it's like yes, you should. But that should be a learning experience. You should be mad at me because no one ever told me. You know, it's one of those things that makes sense. But at the end, I did take fault for it, and you know, I got like a point, a strike, or something like that. Well, I don't really care. I, I quit the job. It was stupid. They paid me like nine dollars an hour. They get paid. I think they said twelve now. I'm mad as hell. I'm like, what happened? I don't care. I just know I would never work at Six Flags ever again. Period. With that being said, be sure to like, subscribe, and tune for the next video. Peace. Ariel the poet.